Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Dwyercrime.blog, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, over the years here online, we've dealt with the worst possible crimes, right? Crimes against family members, the O.J. Simpson case, crimes where the perpetrator might have committed a crime against a family member, but authorities never prosecuted. The Jean Benet Ramsey case, right? Crimes where a roommate may have killed another roommate. The Amanda Knox case. And of course, after making the videos, there are comments left on the videos by people who agree strongly one way or the other. Right? The Adnan Syed case, where he's accused of killing his ex girlfriend. But of all the cases that I've done here online, certainly. On the very short list of those cases, the case that seems to have elicited the most blowback, where people are upset on a visceral level, where someone will leave a comment and they'll say, look, I know in my heart this guy is guilty, is the murder of Lacey Peterson and her unborn son, Connor, allegedly and I use that word, allegedly, by Scott Peterson. Now, this case, more than most, has a lot of background noise on it. If I were to try to address the entire case, and I've made videos on this case, right, it would be awkward and unwieldy, and people could take their eye off the ball because the case has so many moving parts. So in this video, let's not focus on Amber Fry. In part, this is important, because Amber Fry really has no personal knowledge of what happened on December 24th. Right? The day that Lacey Peterson is reported missing. Let's not focus on the burglary that by chance happens on December 24th, right across the street from where Scott and Lacey live. Right now, the prosecution, of course, wants you to believe that that burglary happened on a different date right, the 26th, when the media was all around Scott Peterson's house. The problem is there's at least one witness who was passing by the house across the street who saw things that looked suspicious. Right? A van. Some men. We'll exclude that from the conversation. Right? What I want to do is to actually focus on one part of the case where if the evidence isn't clear, then the entire case falls apart. Right? The house. What happened at the house? We know the prosecution's theory of the case. They want you to believe that Lacey Peterson is killed at her house either late on the 23rd Right? or possibly the morning of December 24th. That's the prosecution's theory, folks. Lacey Peterson is not supposed to have left the house. 
Now, for purposes of this video, and I need to have people understand how ambiguous, at a minimum, the evidence is. We'll ignore the multiple witnesses who actually saw Lacey Peterson walking her dog after Scott Peterson supposedly left the house. Right? We know he leaves the house to go to the Berkeley Marina. We know that. Right? We know he stops off at his office. No one's disputing that Scott Peterson at some point on the morning of the 24th leaves his house. And of course, there are multiple witnesses who claim they saw Lacey Peterson walking the dog after that. We'll exclude that. Rather, let's just figure out whether the prosecution's theory that Lacey Peterson dies either late on the 23rd or very early on the 24th holds water. If it doesn't, if there's no evidence that Lacey Peterson died at home on the 23rd or the 24th, folks, there is no case, right? No evidence, no case. What you have, rather, is an effort at distraction, where you're supposed to hear about a mistress that the guy went on a couple dates with. You're supposed to hear about the guy's personality who goes boating on Christmas Eve. You're supposed to hear about neighbors who are confused, multiple neighbors. Right? Oh, I saw Lacey walking her dog. Then, of course, the question is, are you sure it was Lacey? Because the neighborhood had more than one pregnant woman. Right? In the back of this, what you should be thinking of is the fact that the state has the burden of proof. Right? The state, with its huge resources, has to prove against a lone civilian defendant beyond a reasonable doubt that that defendant committed the murder. I believe in this case there's a bigger question than the burden of proof. That question is whether evidence exists that this defendant did the murder. Right? This is that rare case where the defendant might actually not be guilty at all. Right? When I say guilty, I mean the, def the defendant might not have done the murder. Let's just say I'm not surprised that since I put up some videos here online on this case, that, of course, Scott Peterson is no longer on death row. Right? The big question is whether he should be in prison at all. So, let's talk about the house. Late December 23rd, and of course, on December 24th, the next day. Now, understand the prosecution's theory. Scott Peterson was planning on killing his wife, who's eight months pregnant, with their first child. Connor. He had these plans in place. He has it all figured out. Let me just make a simple point here. Over the years, we've profiled some killers who are very savvy. Right? O.J. Simpson, who I believe is guilty. As I commented on in an early video, is sitting on a plane. If you believe, like I do, that he's guilty, he has a cut that he's having a problem stopping from bleeding. The people around him know he's O.J. Simpson because he's a celebrity. The pilot hears that O.J. Simpson is on the plane. 
the pilot comes over and talks to O.J., who, according to reports, right, according to the people around him, is cool, calm, and collected. Not so long after he has killed not one, but two people for the first time in his life. Somehow he hides the bloody finger from everyone around them. Right? No one recalls O.J. showing favoritism to the finger. No one's alerted to the finger. No one notices a big cut on O.J.'s hand even though O.J., according to the prosecution timeline, didn't really have a lot of time to clean up that finger, right? Obviously, the finger is bleeding badly enough where O.J.'s blood is dropping at the crime scene. Make no mistake about it, we've dealt with some criminal mastermind types, right? O.J.'s defense would later argue that he cuts the finger in Chicago, when he knocks over glass after hearing that his ex-wife had been murdered, right? Well, here, Scott Peterson is supposed to have figured out, he's supposed to have prepared anchors, and he's supposed to have figured out that he's going to kill his wife. He's going to put her body in his boat. He's going to go to the Berkeley Marina and he's going to dump the body and he's going to have the presence of mind to make phone calls on his way back from the Berkeley Marina to his wife's phone so he could leave recordings of, hey, babe, I'm coming home, establishing his timeline and also the idea that he thought his wife was still alive. So understand, late the night of the 23rd, according to the prosecution theory, Scott Peterson is supposed to have been well into his plan already to kill his wife, right? He has anchors all prepared. Understand he's out of the house early the next day. So on the 23rd, you should know that Scott Peterson pays the health insurance, for he and his wife. In other words, he's about to kill her. But he understands, hey, I can't let any bill go unpaid. I need to make this payment so people don't think I knew that my wife wouldn't need health insurance. Understand, too, that his wife had a sister named Amy, Amy Rocha. So what does Scott do, knowing that he's going to kill his wife either late the 23rd, right? And that's really the prosecution's theory, folks. She's supposed to have been killed late on the 23rd or early the morning of the 24th. Believe it or not, Scott invites Amy Rocha over to the house. We know what Lacey was wearing on the 23rd because of Amy Rocha, who comes over to the house after 8.30 p.m. to eat pizza with the couple. Now, let's talk about the lack of evidence, okay? And we know, by the way, that Lacey's wearing black pants the night of the 23rd. So if we're to believe that Scott is a criminal mastermind who has some diabolical plot to kill his wife, here is Scott having witnesses over to see him and his wife. about 12 hours before she's missing. Well, let me point out that Amy, who knows her sister, obviously, and Scott, 
doesn't see any tension between the two of them. Right? If there's tension between the two of them, if Scott and his wife are having problems, wouldn't Scott want to keep people away from the two of them? No. The last night that we know that Lacey lived, Scott has her sister come over and they hang out. Now, would it shock you, and I need for you to think of the evidence here, the forensic evidence, would it shock you to know that there's simply no evidence? None. Cops went through the house. No evidence whatsoever that Scott killed Lacey at the house. There's no blood. There's no evidence of poisoning. There's no knife with blood on it. There's no gun. So this is that case where you're a juror and you're thinking, okay, wow, this case doesn't belong on CSI because there's no evidence at the house to process. The prosecution wants you to take a leap of faith. Right, to believe that the circumstances show that Lacey necessarily had to have been killed the night of the 23rd, which is what they argued at trial, or the 24th before Scott leaves, because Scott, according to the prosecution theory, has to leave the house with a dead Lacey in order to go to his office and then go to the Berkeley Marina with Lacey's body. So, the prosecution theory, given the fact that there's no blood, there's no evidence of a struggle, folks, at the house. Scott clearly couldn't have killed her in the early part of the night on the 23rd because they had company. They had Lacey's sister there. So the prosecution's theory is that after the sister left, Scott did what's called a soft kill. He smothers Lacey as she lays in bed with a pillow. Now understand, you have to believe that in order to even consider, consider the possibility that Scott killed his wife. They're telling you Scott couldn't have done it with a knife or a gun. They don't have any of that evidence. Right? They can't tell you that there's a struggle. They don't have any of that evidence. Folks, the case is lacking in evidence. Now let's talk about the problem with the soft kill pillow theory. That means that Lacey's wearing black pants on the 23rd. We know that from her sister. That means that Lacey never wakes up on the 24th. Right? Scott kills her. According to the prosecution theory, the night of the 23rd, 24th, so Lacey would be dead. So then, of course, Scott would remove a dead Lacey from the house. There couldn't be evidence, couldn't, that Lacey actually woke up. Because if there's any evidence that Lacey woke up, that Lacey changed her clothes, that Lacey did anything around the house. Then the idea that she was killed in bed by a pillow falls apart. Right? Any doubt, by the way, should 
lead to a not guilty verdict because the prosecution's theory of the case, put it this way, their burden is they have to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, just to understand, when Lacey's body is found, she's not wearing black pants. When her body is found in the Berkeley Marina months later, Lacey has on tan pants. Tan, not brown. The folklore that Lacey was wearing the same clothes as she was on the 23rd is false. It's simply not true. Understand, too, that Lacey, when she's found, is wearing an underwire bra. In other words, Lacey gets dressed. Right? Lacey actually dresses up. Different pants, underwire bra. It's interesting, too, because if you look at photos, you can imagine the cops show up at the house. They take a lot of photos. Lacey's curling iron is out. The problem is her sister was there the day before. And the sister and her, who were dealing with hairstyles and stuff like that, having family moments put away the curling iron. The fact that the curling iron is seen in photos out when the cops get there implies that Lacey did her hair the morning of the 24th. She's not only up, she's not only changing her pants, right? She's working on her hair. So, you either have to believe that Lacey is up. The most obvious explanation is Lacey wakes up on the 24th and is starting her day. Or Scott Peterson is a criminal mastermind who is thinking of the small stuff such as, I've just killed my wife by smothering her with a pillow. Let me change her clothes. Because her sister saw what she was wearing, and if this body is ever found, I need to have her wearing different clothes. Let me take the curling iron out. Because if I don't, the sister who was here last night, who I invited to the house, might be able to say to the cops, we put the curling iron away and Lacey wouldn't leave the house without having her hair done. Let's talk about some other facts. And just keep in mind, you have a jury of 12 I'm just telling you, if I were on a jury, these are the kind of things I would be thinking about. Right? I would be asking myself, what? No blood? They can't tell me what the murder weapon is? Then I'd think, okay, they're claiming it's a pillow. If there's any evidence that Lacey wakes up the next day, I'd be questioning the pillow. Then, of course... I'd be thinking to myself, wow, is this proof beyond a reasonable doubt? That's before I think about the rest, right? The people who saw Lacey walking the dog. Now, would it shock you that at 8.40 to 8.45, someone at the house was on the house laptop computer? Would that shock you? Let me also point out, too, that the person who's on the computer from 8.40 to 8.45 on the morning of the 24th is looking up 
a gap fleece scarf and a sunflower motif umbrella stand. Now the sunflower motif is interesting because Lacey Peterson had a sunflower tattoo. She was into sunflowers. Right now here again, you could believe that Lacey's already been killed and that Scott is a criminal mastermind who has thought things through to the point where at 8.40 he logs on and makes sure he looks for something that is an interest of his wife. Or you could believe that Lacey is alive at 8.40, consistent with her change of clothes, consistent with her curling iron having been out. Now, would it shock you to know that Scott claimed when he spoke with the police that he and Lacey watched Lacey's favorite show, Martha Stewart, the morning of the 24th, right as he's leaving, right there watching Martha Stewart. Then he leaves to go fishing. So the cops say, hey, what did Martha talk about? And Scott, in the interview, this is one of those interviews at the police station. Scott says that Martha Stewart referred to merengues. Now understand, she did. On the show that aired the morning of December 24th. Right? A little before 10 o'clock on Martha Stewart's show, she actually refers to merengues. Scott is correct. Scott claims he left shortly thereafter. That would be around 9.47 a.m. in the morning. Now, when the cops get there, the argument is that the house is cleaned up. Right? The defense contention is Scott leaves, Lacey's about to mop the floor. Well, let's think this through. When the cops arrive, the mop is there in the house. Right? What was supposed to have been mopped up? You might recall when the case was pending, the argument was, hey, the cops showed up. It looked like the place had been cleaned up. Obviously, Scott had cleaned up the place to hide evidence. So they test the mop. The reason why the prosecution had to rely on the idea that Scott smothered a uh, Lacey using a pillow is because when they tested the mop, there was no forensic evidence on the mop that would suggest that the mop was used to clean up blood, to clean up bodily fluids. Right, folks, there was no evidence, and that's the theme here. There was no forensic evidence that the mop the cleaning area, the bucket that the mop went in was used to clean up any evidence of a crime, right? You're dealing with a very tight time window. Lacey's sister is there the night of the 23rd. Scott Peterson is out of the house before 10 o'clock the morning of the 24th. Right? Either you believe that Scott was able to elaborately stage the scene, that Scott, who the prosecution was hinting at, had financial problems, had the wherewithal to pay Lacey's health insurance on the 23rd. Either you believe Scott is an O.J. Simpson-level criminal mastermind, 
Or this is a guy who there's no evidence he killed his wife at the house. So, when looking at this case, don't get distracted. You hear Berkeley Marina, and you know that's where the body was found, right? Just understand everybody in Modesto, including any group that may have grabbed Lacey Peterson, knew that Scott had been at the Berkeley Marina after this story broke. It was widely reported in the news. If you're going to frame Scott, where else would you put the body? Think about it, too. The cops talk with Scott, who talks with them, right, early on. And Scott doesn't seem to be emotionally disturbed or stressed during the conversation. This is a guy who's supposed to have, for the first time in his life that we know of, killed someone. And, of course, he killed his unborn child in the process. And we're to believe that he's cool, calm, and collected. Right? The cops are able to search the house. They find nothing. Folks, that's the case. Don't get distracted by everything else. If Scott doesn't kill his wife in the house. The prosecution has no case because that's their theory of the case. Understand, they're so desperate here because there's no murder weapon. They can't even tell you clearly how Lacey gets smothered with a pillow and then somehow is able to change her clothes. Right, folks, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't come close to the legal standard of beyond a reasonable doubt. Right, there's no evidence of a struggle at the house. If Scott and Lacey are having problems and he has some diabolical plan to kill her, why would he invite her sister, who knew the couple, over for pizza the night of the 23rd? It just makes no sense. The evidence is lacking. This is that rare case where the media has convinced us that there's a mountain of evidence that does not exist. If you don't know how Lacey was killed, if there isn't evidence of how Lacey was killed, then what's this case really about? I'll concede. The prosecution convinced me that Scott committed adultery. That wasn't the charge against him. That's how I see it. We'll go over other parts of this case in other videos. I understand. I come across at times here online, and I'll plead guilty to providing evidence in support of very unpopular people like Lee Harvey Oswald and Scott Peterson. But understand, that's what the state should be doing. If you're going to convict a guy of murder of the worst kind, his spouse, his unborn child, in a death penalty case, if you're going to put a guy on death row, don't you need more evidence than this? Let me also challenge my crowd here. If you feel I'm ignoring evidence that clearly points to the idea that Lacey was murdered at home, Right? Because the prosecution doesn't have her leaving the house alive. Alert us to that evidence. Feel free to include links in the comment section of this YouTube video. 
Thanks for stopping by.